Happy springtime, family. Thank you, everybody, for your wonderful words, acknowledgement, and support of this Polygyny Series YouTube videos. And I wanted to speak about one of the comments that I got from a sister who said that she didn't think that um, single parenthood was an, enough of a reason to be involved in a polygynous relationship. And I want to address that, and I want to call this the motherhood and polygyny video because um, I did mention one of the reasons that I thought that polygyny was a good idea because I was a single mother and you know I don't know the sister's background or anything like that but I can see how somebody wouldn't really see the purpose if they never really raised children on their own and then again if they never had you know both parents you really don't know what you're missing um, as I mentioned before I grew up with both my parents in an Air Force environment so almost everyone around the majority of people around me had both parents and in those days in the Air Force there weren't any single parents so everybody around me had both their parents so I only knew what my children were missing once I raised them without their father and sad to say I didn't appreciate you know having both of my parents because I didn't know what it was like for anybody not to have them but as an adult I have recognized over and over again how serious it is that children grow up without their father and without a support system so not just without the father the sisterhood is very important so that's another reason for polygyny we cannot blame anyone for taking our power away we women are the most powerful beings on this planet yes we have the inner strength the spiritual connection the intuitiveness all of the wonderful things that women goddesses were worshipped for in the ancient days this was the internal strength of the crook you know you see the Egyptians ancient Egyptians pictured with the crook and then you have the flail right and they're holding them up in their hands the flail is for outer strength it represents outer strength and that's mostly what men have the crook is for inner strength which is what women have and that is what's necessary in order to evolve so that's where we are right now on our planet the necessity for evolution as a human being into a divine being there is no other way that our young people are going to survive. There's no other way that we're going to survive if we don't come together and mend our relationships. And it begins with the sacred sisterhood. I saw a play by Pearl Clay. She had a segment in there about the Amazon women. And it was called Before the Men Came. And it talked about the power that we had as women for immaculate conception. To be able to give birth just simply by having the support, the focus, the intensity of the spiritual awakening of your sister circle. So polygyny is not about the men. Get over that. I know sisters that will do anything within their power to keep from having a divine sacred union within a sisterhood with another woman when that woman's involved with the man of her desire. She'd rather stay jealous and separated. She can see even the two of them or how many of them building an empire that truly she belongs to and she may long to be a part of. Her child is going to inherit it, but she will do everything in her power to stay outside of that circle because of her belief systems. My Bible calls you your BS. She will stay outside of that love and that connection with another family, especially another sister that can help her with that child. Why would you want to be so stubborn that you would keep the child away from a union of, of many souls and many spirits on a divine path? I don't see how that's detrimental to children. I've seen people say that the children suffer in a polygynous situation. I'm not talking about the imbalanced ones. I understand that. I know that that does happen. I've heard the stories, but that's why I advocate a relationship that involves several women in a sisterhood that it be grounded with the foundation of our set which is the foundation the throne thereby her foundation is Osir and Oset the father and the mother and if a woman is grounded in that initiation system you can pick up Queen of Fools sacred woman book if you're wondering what I'm speaking about if you want to grow in that divine way and let go of your insecurities and your anger and your fear about uniting with other sisters because it's about us. We are going to right 
the inscription on the walls of the new pyramids, of the new tombs, and trust me, they're being built now. That's the reason why we study the ancients. A lot of people don't know why, you know, we study the ancients, talking about that's the past, it's over, why are you still there? We're not there, we're learning from there, so that we can build the now. And I'm welcoming you to be a part of the now, and a part of our destiny, and our new dynasty, the dynasty of the She Clan. It's spelled X-I, our ancient ancestors here in this continent, that we call America. They spoke about a She-Clan dynasty. And that play by Pearl Clegg when she talked about the Amazon women before the men came. Don't give your power away. Don't remain jealous, insecure, separated from your sacred source, your sacred sisterhood, because you want to be angry at a man because he had sex with other women. That's being on all fours, literally. That's not being able to evolve into your divine self. You cannot be a goddess and still be holding on to fear, anxiety, insecurity, anger. I'm working on a reality show with Dr. Pat Dixon. The other video on my YouTube, Dr. Dixon from Georgia State University. We had a roundtable discussion. I'm going to show you. The men wanted to know why the women so angry. And yes, they play a part. But this is what I also learned in my spiritual evolution system with Asara said. We are now in our second moon of initiation. The first moon was Amen. The second moon, the second 28 days, is Osir. And Osir is recognizing your divine self. And that it, your person, your personality with all the emotions and the feelings, the anger, that's not your true self. So why would you put your true self above your divine self? So recognize that. And then you can remain in Amen, which is a state of peace no matter what's going on around you. So no matter how he's behaving, this is what I had to learn. No matter what he's doing, you're together because you have a divine, sacred mission together. And if you have children, if you've birthed a child or a business or something else that you're working on and you're nurturing together, which is your Heru, then you need to make that relationship work. You need to build with that king that God as a goddess. You need to nurture that son. Whatever it is, if it's a child or a business, you don't abandon it because of your anger and your resentment. And you will see as you begin to maintain your state of peace, no matter what's going on around you, you'll affect that, that feeling and that, that energy and that vibration. Everyone around you will be affected by it. And I've watched it happen. And then they will begin to change. And they will begin to want to evolve with you. And you won't have to fight with them. You don't. You don't have to be angry because he had sex. And he didn't tell you about it. And a baby came out of it. You don't have to be angry. You can embrace that sister and embrace that baby. And that seems to be intimidating to women when I say that I will embrace you and I embrace your child. I wish I had that. And if that's not a compelling enough reason to have a divine sacred sisterhood with a man involved. But that's the, that's the emphasis. It's on the sisterhood. Yes, the man is involved. But it's the divine sacred sisterhood that is going to eliminate the pain, the disease, the wars. We need to come together, reclaim our power, find your sacred sisterhood and embrace it. Don't run from it. Don't stay isolated from it. I talked about the lesson of my sister Chriselle. And you know what I've learned in doing my research? In ancient Mexico, there was a moon goddess by the name of Ich Chel. Ich, which is the wizard, Chel. And my sister Chriselle, we used to call her Chel. And so with her passing, I choose to remember her as Ich. Chell, my divine lunar moon goddess. And the lesson that she taught me is to embrace your sacred sisterhood or it will take you out. Embrace it. It's much more pleasant. Sisters can be pleasant to one another. I know I have visions of pleasantness and beauty and love. 
and I long to embrace the sisters that long to embrace me and the children because I've raised my children without a father and without a sisterhood circle that could feed them and nourish them in all the different ways. I'm not equipped to do it all. And that doesn't mean that I'm inadequate. That just means that we are a unified being. God is the embodiment. We are the embodiment of all that God is. We together as a collective, that's another thing about our men. It's the unification of a people, of a mind, of a spirit. That is us together. Not, I'm an independent woman. Well, the single ladies, I don't want to be. That does not heal our relationships. And if you still want to go that route, all you have to do is look around you and see that it's not working. It is dysfunctional. We have a dysfunctional society as a result of the single ladies and where am I independent women? We are all interdependent upon each other. Let's begin to embrace that and exercise it because I see the magic happening in my life. And if the sisterhood doesn't want to embrace me, I embrace the sisterhood. And eventually the sisterhood will embrace me. That's how I'm going to rock this. So I still have some things I want to say to the men, but the sirens outside my window are getting in the way. So I'll end this for now. And the motherhood part, I'd love to hear your comments on it because I would have loved to have had a circle of women to help me with my children. I know they, they just be the most evolved young people on this planet right now. Peace.